All right. Praise the Lord. We come bearing gifts. Amen. Yeah. And I always like to uh, honor Pastor Walt the Wheel as the mom and dad of the church on the street. Amen. Yeah. 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 Real quick background I came to Church on the Street in 1994. And like Walt said, just as Henri as probably anybody he ever met. You know, just bumping heads with Walt. And, uh, you know, most people, they'll just throw you away. Bump heads with them too much, you know. It's, uh, you know, they just get tired of you, you know, just throw you away, amen. I noticed something about Pastor Walt. And that was is that, you want a tangle? You want a tangle, amen? On the Word of God and what's right and what we need, He'll tangle with you, amen? And, man, you will tangle with somebody like you ain't never tangled with before, amen? So, that's how I learned, amen? I learned through, uh, through Walt disciplining me and speaking up and being humble but still loving me. You know, we used to think, well, you know, I don't want to play favoritisms with everybody. He's favoritism with this person. And I noticed that the people that I thought that he played favoritisms with were the people who were always getting in trouble. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. The one that he played favoritisms, he just had to rebuke them a little bit more. Amen? Yeah. And they were always running to his office. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Have to run all the way across the field then, you know, we'd be house managers. You're going to do this. No, no, I'm going to check a wall. Take off the field. <laughs> we don't get to the Washington house. <laughs> hey, Amen. They want to tell you. you know, right across. And one time I got into it with this guy's name was Chester. Amen. Oh, Chester. And I mean, <laughs> Walt put me director over him. He's supposed to be my assistant. Amen. He was but he lived in the Washington house. I'd come home and then I'd like to watch a football game, amen? Maybe at the Washington house where, you know, nobody else was over there. <laughs> but now you guys don't get to do this anymore, so. Or you might, I don't know. Third phase whatever. Okay, I'd already graduated. So. And uh, I wanted to come home and watch a football game. And Chester locked the door. He took the TVs, locked them all up. I don't know what he did with them, amen? <laughs> Oh, rascal, we just getting back from the Saturday outreach, amen? I couldn't find nothing. So I had a little, little deal. I said, well, Walt, you know, I'm going to watch the football. He said, you know what, Tim? Chester's standing right there. He said, on Saturday, you can use my office. As a matter of fact, I've got a TV right here in my closet, a little bitty thing, and you can use my office. And Chester just had a fit. No, no, no! He didn't want me in Walt's office, amen? <laughs> And right then it dawned on me that, you know, all this favoritism that I think is being played is not really favoritism, amen? Some people just simply require more attention than others. That's it. And if you sit around, you're going to obviously get to know them better, amen? If you spend more time with them, whether it's willingly or unwillingly, amen? So... Anyway, we have uh, some t-shirts here we want to present. This is actually not coming from me, so I can't take the credit. Carl came up and he said, you know what? Why don't you present a t-shirt to Pastor Walt? I'll take the credit for this. And then I said, well, if I'm giving one to Walt, I'm giving one to Wayne. Amen. 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 So, we have some... L.A. Church on the Street. Hey, man, L.A. Church on the Street. Let's go stand up. There we go. Hallelujah. And then Cheryl did come over and say, well, I want to give him some CRM to the church, too. Hey, man. I want to. <laughs> Unless y'all want another one, Cheryl will be glad to give you guys some CR. CR Vista Church on the street, why don't y'all stand up? Uh, yeah. 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 Pastor 
John and Cheryl, they have just really done an outstanding job there. Amen. So, uh, Pastor Walt, you guys come on up and get your t-shirts. There you go, Miss Louine. Mom. Yeah. 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 Break <laughs> though. So if that thought came from anybody else but Carl, I'm sorry. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. I thank you for today. I thank you for being here, Lord. Uh, I thank you that all the people that came with us today were able to get here. And we had uh, safe travels. Father, we want to, you know what's on my heart, so Lord. I ask you put the words in my mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 First of all, I want to talk about a vision today. We did right in line with what we were talking about. So if you guys want to go over to chapter 13, that's fine. Numbers. Right in line with what I wanted to speak about today. And that is possessing the land. Amen? But what I would like to do today is maybe kind of give an illustrated sermon. Amen? Amen? You know, of what? There's so many people in here that, I told you guys, I came in in 94 just like y'all did. And, uh, you know, there's so many people, like Pete was saying, they just think they can't do it, or they're negative, or they're, you know, how many, raise your hand if you think God's called you to do something. Raise your hand. Wow, praise God. Okay, well, there we go, the whole place. About... And He has called you to do something, yeah. amen? amen? He's called you to possess the land. He's called you to everywhere the soul of your foot goes, amen? Should be blessed, amen? Yeah, amen? Everywhere you go, something should happen. People should either get saved or at least know that you're a Christian, amen? amen. When I first got here, I don't want anybody calling me a Christian. <laughs> I very, very first got here. Don't you call me no Christian? I was like calling me a bad name, amen? <laughs> you know why? Because I didn't want to take the responsibility. No, don't go, oh, you call me Chris. Now I gotta be nice, I gotta do this, and if I do this, you're gonna say I'm a phony, and if I do this, you're gonna you guys know what I mean. Yeah. They overcame by the word of their testimony, amen. The blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. When you come up here and testify, now you think something might be expected out of you through others, amen? Now you might have to set an example. It's the grace of God, and it's the mercy of God, and only the grace of God, and only the mercy of God, that we can do anything. Amen? That's true. Amen. That's it. So therefore, if, if it's His grace, and it's His mercy, and it's His land, amen, and it's His stuff, amen, like Pete was talking about with the deed. By the way, I would have loved to have been here while Pete was here. He wasn't here in 94, but if Pastor Pete would have been here, I would have just loved to learn from him. You know, you got a real, real privilege being able to sit up under someone like that. But when he was preaching, I thought, well, you know, you want a few more minutes? You can have some of my time too, Pete, amen? Because he was preaching exactly what I wanted to, you know, but he was saying it, you know, really well. Amen? Amen? I want to... Uh, Read a little newsletter. This is what we've, we've been doing to to possess the land. Our, our newsletter comes out every month. Uh, I put on here, and I wasn't even going to do this. I was just reading. I had wrote some of the newsletter, and I thought, well, this is exactly what we're talking about. I was going to read it. Uh, thank you for the financial aid from all the diff for, for all the different people who have helped. Amen. Uh, we opened L.A. Church on the Street and Sierra Vista Church on the Street. And it's going great. The training program in Phoenix is going great. Danny and Tammy Berry are almost done. We have sent people already. To, uh, we've sent. We already sent 11 people to Phoenix to train. Amen. How many people enjoyed Danny and Tammy? Yeah. They were here? Yeah. Isn't that fun? I heard that, that Tammy was just. Raise your hand if Tammy counseled you a little bit and helped you a little bit. 
Oh, my word. Oh, you got it. I guess it's true then. <laughs> but she was here to, to, to train herself. Amen? Amen? But at the same time, you know, the best way to get something is to give something. That's right. Amen? That's right. Amen? So I'm so happy. You know, I know Danny's ready to come back and start working our, our work program. You know, I was talking to Danny P. today. If we get any work in Phoenix, we'll send it to you guys' way. If y'all get some over in Tucson, let us know. You know, if we get something going on in L.A., we're planted in L.A. If we get something going on in Sierra Vista, we're planted in Sierra Vista. We want to possess the land, amen? Yeah. We can't. There's a tangible, tangible tangible thing going on here. Yes. That means something that's real. Yes. Not something we just talked about. And we would walk out people coming to his office all day long talking about they're going to do this and they're going to do that and they're going to do this. <laughs> and you know, he's like, okay, we'll go with that. And they come back and then nothing is done. Amen? <laughs> I thought you were going to do this. I thought, you know. Well, I think now we have a way where people can train. Yes. You know, we can, we can say, well, in other words, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call Zoe up here in just a minute. Uh, he's a perfect example of what I would like to see start happening here in Tucson or wherever else. First of all, a vision starts with a thought. Okay. In other words, when Walt started this place, it, it, he just thought about it. Amen. Just you know, it was a thought. But it could have just stayed a thought. Amen. <laughs> and he said, you know, well, let's get some houses. Amen? Which that's what we're doing right now. We're getting houses. And so I can start putting some people in there and start a cycle. And he had to be patient. Some things happened. It didn't go his way. Amen? He had to be patient, real patient. And another thought. Amen? I'm not going to let go of this vision. I know God put it in my heart. I don't care if it takes 10 years. I want to wait. Amen? And he started. I believe one house, the Washington house, correct? One house. That's it. And all of a sudden, everything just grew. Amen? Why? Because of Pastor Walt? No. Because of Pastor Walt's obedience. Amen. It grew because if God's in it, then that's it. If God's in it, it don't matter, folks. If God's in it, I used to have long hair down to here. And when I first went to Tucson, I went to Pastor Walt and I said, man, you think I got to be a pastor now? You think I got to cut my hair? He said, no. He said, Tim, if God's in it, it don't matter how long your hair is. Amen? <laughs> You get what I'm saying? So you know what? For about a year there, I just had long hair. Amen? When I first came in, man, I was crazy. I had hair down to here, and it was going everywhere, and I was all strung out on crystal, and uh, just coming out of some witchcraft stuff, and my head was in the clouds, and I was seeing stuff, and I mean, it was bad. Amen? And I was telling them about all these demons and stuff. Amen? <laughs> Pastor Randy came up to me and said, Tim, I'm going to tell you something, man. You got this whole camp here spooked about demons. <laughs> if you don't be quiet, you're going to have to leave. Amen? And, you know, Pastor Randy was a, was a great example. He, he passed on. But, uh, and and he, he didn't play, amen? I knew, I knew I watched Pastor Randy. He wasn't, you know what I mean? If he said you're going to be out, you're going to be out, amen? So... <laughs> Anyway, um, to possess the land, uh, you know, obviously there has to be finances and stuff, amen? But not really. Not really. I mean, when God sent the two people out, amen, he sent two people here, two people here, what did he say? He said, go with nothing. So why does there have to be finances? Amen. I mean, yeah, eventually. I'm not talking about eventually, of course, there has to be something. But it doesn't have to be, well, we're saving up five grand and then we'll go. Well, we're going to go if it's comfortable. You know what he said? He said, if you got two coats, leave one here. If you got two canes, leave one here. Amen? Yeah, don't even take it. Don't even take a backup then. Just go. That's what Pete was saying. You got to just go. When you have a vision and God puts something on your heart, you got to go. You can't just sit around and think this and just have the thought. Amen? God is the one who put the thought in your head in the first place. If it's of God, amen, you will know it's of God because it's going to have something to do with glorifying Him. And if it has something
nothing to do with glorifying Him. He's going to give you whatever means you need. That's good. Amen. I remember when we opened up Castle Grand Church on the street. I was going to Castle Grand to open it up, and the electricity guy was coming this way to put it. Well, you got one more day to pay your bill, and we're turning it off in Tucson. Amen? Seriously. Here comes the electricity guy. Me and Mark are getting in the car to go scout out the land. Amen? And I could have said, well, you know what? We can't even pay the electricity here. Come on, man. Read it. All kind of people. Moses. Moses didn't know he was going to go set the people free, did he? He just knew he was going to go up on the mountain. And then God put the thought in his head. God said, you know what? Here's what I need you to do. God spoke to Moses, didn't he? You think Moses went up on that mountain going, yeah, I'm going to talk to God and he's going to get behind me and I'm going to set the people free. <laughs> when God told him that, his first thought was, Lord, I just got out of there. You must be crazy. <laughs> Do you not know that Pharaoh said, if I show up and anybody sees me, they're to kill me? But what did he go with? <laughs> Nothing. Well, same thing with El Paso. Russell went up there with nothing. It was just a thought. Finally, we couldn't get no finances together. I said, Russell, I got a great idea. He went up to train in Tucson. I got a great idea. You remember that rescue mission that was up there? Why don't you go check in like anybody else? And you'll be there, and they'll kick you out during the day, and then you can go look for a place. Amen. And I'll send you what I can send you. Amen? Amen. He was ready to roll. He was like, if God's in it, maybe that's how I got to do it. Maybe that's how I got to go. Because if you sit around and wait forever, you ain't going to do nothing. You know, I'm sorry. You're not going to do nothing. If God has it in you, amen? And what happened? He started a, a nice little, little deal there. Through a thought. Amen? Through a thought. And he talked about, let's not get ahead of God. Amen? Because after I was six months in Tucson, I called Walter and I said, I'm going to El Paso. Tim, you need to get those ants out of your pants. <laughs> well, I would always say that. You got ants in your pants, Tim. <laughs> you know, Rascal, you just got this and that. And you just got the, you know, just, just, uh. I should have listened. Because usually sometimes Paul said, well, go ahead. But this time he kind of said, Tim, you know, maybe not. Took off to El Paso, got 20 miles outside of, my, outside of Tucson. Time and chain broke on my car, amen? When your time and chain breaks, you ain't going nowhere, amen? I thought, you old devil, I'll get a tow truck and I'll go get on a plane. Well, if this ain't God, that plane might crash, you know what? <laughs> Maybe I ought to wait, amen? And I did. <laughs> About a year and a half later, amen? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make you a point here. Just because God's put something on your heart, amen? Um, you may have to wait. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying, you know, you just all of a sudden you've got to go right then or whatever. Right. But you got to know when it's time. Yes. Yes. Amen? And I'm not saying that if you have a vision and you're trying to make some provisions for it, amen, that if you, 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 know, you do need to, you know, you do need to make some provisions, amen, amen. if you can, amen. Well, about a year and a half later, Carl, Carlton called me up and he said, hey, you know, uh, I got an idea. You still want to go to El Paso? And I said, yeah. We went up there, and, you know, we talked to Russell about, well, why don't you stay here, amen. Actually, Russell got mad the first time we told him that. You know Russell. Thank God I ain't doing it. Thank God I ain't doing it. <laughs> hey, Russell, you know what? I'm just telling you, you know, this is an idea we have. Amen? And, you know, it was the Lord. And, you know, and sometimes we do that. Amen? When God tells us something that's going to get us out of our comfort zone. Amen? Your vision is going to get you out of your comfort zone. It's not going to be something you're just going to be comfortable with. It's not going to be something that you're just... Was Moses comfortable? No. Amen. Was Ezra comfortable? Was Nehemiah comfortable? The vision that God... I mean, we can go right on down. 
was Paul comfortable with all the stuff he did? <laughs> no, man. What comfortable? You know, well, you know, I'll do it if if it's going to be comfortable for me. You know, you guys think Walt's comfortable? Huh? He ain't never comfortable. <laughs> He's always pushing people, amen, to do things that they don't think they can do. To be in the Lord, we I do that in, in Tucson because I learned from 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 Pastor Walt. You know, you gotta speak up. You gotta say, hey, you know. You really shouldn't do this. You really shouldn't do that. You know? How about this? How about that? Let me show you something in the Bible. Here's what it says. And you stand on that word. Amen? I mean, so let me go through this real quick, and I'm going to have a couple of people that want to uh, share. I'll, I'll be done on time. Um, possessing the land, amen, has to do with going. But here's what I want to get going, guys. You know, and it's, it'll all be under Pastor Walt, you know, in the week. We had a guy. Or anybody, anybody here, y'all know Brother Zo? Brother Zo? Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Well, he called Walt up, and Walt had a thought. Amen? Why don't you call Tim? Tim's doing this and this and this. If you want to get a house in LA. He called me. I said, well... That's fine, but Zoe, you're going to have to come to Tucson and you're going to have to train. Because I'm going to have to know who you are. I'm going to have to know that you're willing. I'm going to have to know that you're going to be obedient. I'm going to have to know that, you know, you're on board with what we're doing. Amen? Sure enough, here comes Zoe. Amen? Put him out on the blockade. Amen? Car wash. Teaching Bible studies. Just the whole When the guys come here, when Danny and and Tammy and everybody else comes here. Dan, you got to understand, Danny's used to telling everybody what to do. He's the boss in Tucson. I mean, he's he's the boss. He's you know for the for the work program for the he's a discipleship director work program all that stuff. And he had to come here and he got the RAs telling him, let's go, boy. Come on, get in here. Do that. Do this. Do that. Do this. Amen. I mean, I'm just saying you got to think of it. Danny been in charge for a year, telling everybody. What I'm the only one that's over here. So, um, I know that wasn't my guy, so. There <laughs> <laughs> could be consequences. Oh. So, he came up and he trained, and that's what I want some of you guys to do. I want you to, 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 to if you want to go start a, a church on the street city, or a house, just a house, a house is tangible. Now we could say, "Well, I'm going to do this dream center, but you know, wait till I raise up 32 grand, and I don't, you know what I mean." But a house, you can go. Amen. We'll back you. We'll get behind you. Walt will get behind you too. Pastor Walt, he, you know, he got behind Zell. As a matter of fact, Zell called him up and said, "We need help a little bit." And he did. Did he want to? But does not have time to do what I do. And check on the how and make sure everybody, he doesn't have time for all that. He's got too much going on here. I started actually being the church on the street evangelist back in like, what, 95? That's what I'll get up to. Yeah, Tim's the evangelist. He's going to the outreach and, you know, doing this as the outreach coordinator. And nobody showed up with their guitar. I was standing right there with my guitar. Nobody showed up to preach, then I preached. If nobody showed up, you know what I mean? And I really feel that it's just kind of carried that out since then of what God has given, the responsibility that God had given to me. Amen? <laughs> different people have different ways of doing things. Amen? Right. And, you know, if you do go out and you do step out and, and start your own deal, you, <laughs> then you get to run it your way. Amen? We have a system that works. Amen. We get up in the morning, just like we did back at the houses over there. We praise God. Amen. We have Bible studies during the day. We have a work program where, you know, we go work. We do car washes. We do blockade. It affords the place. Amen. We've been able to set something up where we've been able to actually afford it. Amen. I mean, I wish we had a big old church that was, you know, that'd be great, but we don't. It's just, amen. <laughs> but we know how to go around to churches and through the covering of Church on the Street, Phoenix First, well, I tell them, you know, guys, 
They said, well, who are you? Well, I'm Tim Butler. Well, what was that? I said, well, we're church on the street. Pastor Walt would raise my, my pastor. He comes out of the first assembly. They've got a, a deal going, oh, yeah, I know that deal. And then it's all walled up. He says, yeah, I know that Tim Butler rascal. <laughs> Go ahead and help him out, amen. Or they don't want, I'll say Pastor Barnett. I thought Pastor Barnett. He says he knows some guy named Pastor Walt. Well, let's go tell him, oh, yeah, yeah, we know Walt. Yeah, we've got, you know, I'll Walt. He's a good man, whatever he says. I would, I would, I would get behind him. Amen. He wouldn't, he wouldn't steer you wrong. Amen. So there's a, a, a really a nationwide covering going on here. They knew church on the street in Gatesville, North Carolina, where we actually started a house bud and they were doing great. I mean, all the way, everybody knows. That little homeless program that's doing great that came out of First Assembly, Pastor Tommy Barnett, amen? Everybody in the whole United States, basically. So you get automatic covering, amen? You gotta do right. That's why I said you need to come up. First of all, you need to you need to go to Pastor Walt and say, This is what I want to do. Pastor Waller probably say, well, I'll call Tim and you call him. And we'll, you know what I mean, we'll get the training going like we did for Zoe. came to Tucson and trained. He went out to Sierra Vista and loved it out there and he trained. Amen? Then he went to, Zoe went to L.A. and actually got the house. And then I sent somebody who I know has done a lot of this and I trained him, which is Pastor Darrell. Amen? Pastor Darrell is training Zoe. And when we feel that Zoe's ready to roll, amen, then Daryl's going to go to Dallas and we're going to start one there, amen? amen? So, if it's on your heart, amen, if it's on your heart, if this is what you think God may have called you to go run a house, amen, it's just a little thing. You get, you got three people, you got a program. You can do it. Carl, I ran, I ran our house in Tucson with five people for I don't know how many years. We did banquets. Matter of fact, we got Sierra Vista banquet coming up. Amen. Let's see if we can get Walt down there. Uh... <laughs> Chelsea Walt's first go. No, it didn't. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's coming. Of course, he's, you know, that's, it don't matter. Even if, here's what you guys don't get. Even though you're flesh, and I'm not saying walk, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying, even though your flesh don't want to do it, if God's putting it on your heart, you need, to, you need to go, you need to go do it. There's all kinds of stuff. People don't want to teach Bible studies. People don't want to do this. They don't want to do that. They don't want to get up. They don't want to, look, man, if you're ready, you're worth something. You're worth something. You're worth something. People who get trained here, I believe, in one year is more training than just about any church in 10 years. Amen. I believe that. In one year. We're not going to school and writing everything down, and this is what we'll do, and this is how you do it, and here's the... We're out doing it. I went to Wall one time, and I said, I want to go to this big school. I'm not going to say what school it was. Damn, you don't have to. You don't have to. So you see this piece of paper I got? It don't mean anything. You're already doing it. You're already going out. You're already helping people. In order to possess the land, what do we got to do? We got to go. Amen? We got to go. Okay. Uh, I want the, the, the pastors of Sierra Vista, L.A., and Pastor Diana, just the pastors to come up. Zoe. I don't have time to do what I was going to do, but I want y'all to come up. I want to show you guys, I just want to do a little illustrated sermon, amen, of what they're, they're doing because we don't have time. Where's Brother Zoe at? Come here, Zoe. Can, take about, can you take about two minutes? These are the guys I want you guys to get with. If you want to go, talk to them, amen. Danny and Tammy over there, these guys... So these guys, Daryl helped us with Sierra Vista. He's helping us in L.A. start it. John and Cheryl came here and trained. All these guys have been trained. Amen. They came here to train. Uh, to, to get equipped. 
So, you know what I'm saying, Lorraine? Now we have something that we can, people can train to do this, man. You can, it's not just go drive like I did to Tucson. You know, now it's like, man, there can be a covering, there can be a training, there can be a, we'll show you, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll walk you right through it. How to, and in the meantime, man, we're discipling folks. Yeah. We're discipling folks, amen? So, so just take a couple of minutes. You guys can go, y'all can go ahead. Thank you guys. I promise I'll make you a testimony. Stuff. Uh, anyway. Oh, man. Um, first, give it to God. We're going to praise God for the rest of our lives every day. Amen. But let's just take 32, 10 seconds. Give Pastor Walt some praise. Give Pastor Tim Butler some praise. Pastor Patterson, honor them. Get on your feet and honor them. They're worthy. They're worthy. They're worthy. Thanks, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for these men of God. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Peter. Um, uh, all I can do is... Just tell them what you did. Okay. You know, I, I really didn't do anything, but... I, I, as far as training and, you know, okay, the training, the center, Okay, okay. I, got, I came to church. I came to church on the street, and I just basically obeyed Pastor Wall. He told me to take the bus out. I took the bus out. Um, he told me to... Um, he gave me permission to start out with the Christ Street. We start out with he sent me to L.A. to help another ministry, told me to start preaching on the street, I preached on the street. Everything just opened up from obedience. Cleaning my room, getting up in the morning, just being obedient, being humble, submitting to my authority. That's yeah. basically, to make a long story short, being faithful. Wasn't no talent, wasn't nothing special, other than just being obedient and being faithful. That was it, because God sees it all. You know, you were fun. Pastor Tim sent me 2,500. Well, I don't even want to get into all the numbers, but they trusted me. They, they, Pastor Walt sent me funds, and I was faithful with it. I didn't spend something here and didn't chip me nothing there. I, can we give church? This is Church on the Street, LA, y'all. This is church, yeah, church on the Street, LA. This is the LA Church on the Street. Amen. That's not the right there. Our Dr. Jack, our Papa Smear, Martin Sharon, Pastor Joe. So, all I want is, I want to encourage, I want to just encourage these brothers. Tim, this is this was my fishing buddy when I first went fishing. This is the hard. This guy, we get a video. This guy was running to the bus with, with no shoes on, so we can get the cash and get the people on the bus. That guy right there, that's my that's my fishing buddy, and that's another leader right. That's a leader right there. And we came for you, Tim, to let you know that when you're ready, man, you can come out and do this thing. Start a church on the street, wherever it's at. We're here to let. We're going nationwide. They, 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 they've already been planted. I'm praying that God give me California. I've got LA. I'm, you want to go to Oakland? You want to go to Sacramento? Whatever pastor yeah. you send me, but I want California. And the church on the street, car wash, detail shop. And um, <laughs> you know, pray to God. We're not going to just do it on the side of Pet Boys anymore. We're going to have our own shop, church on the street, car wash, and detail. In the name of God. Amen. So, um, that's basically it. If I can do it, I came from prison. I came from crack. Uh, I was in prison for manslaughter. I sat in these chairs right where you're at, right where you're at, every day, got up before, just like you do. I ain't nothing special. I'm just obedient. I submit, even when I don't feel like it. And God, I use the men of God. I just use the, the eternal wisdom. <laughs> These guys got where they are operating with the wisdom of God when they're when they're making decisions in their lives. There's their guys I don't know if you got that. They're using eternal wisdom. They're using God's thought to direct your lives. And I just got in line with it. And fruit is been, we're seeing the fruit. Amen? You wanna, we got bank accounts, we got vehicles. We even have we're like our own company. We just got a job yesterday. We work out, we we started at 3.30 in the morning, we got up. We're, we're chopping down trees to support the ministry. We worked till 1030 last night. Then we got on the freeway, me and Pastor Daryl, and drove all night just to get here this morning. We don't we don't run on Holy Ghost films right now. It might not be able to tell. Uh, I'm not drunk as you suppose. This is the Holy Ghost. And uh, so uh, I just want to thank the men of God, Pastor Tim. There was purpose. It's like having your own company. If we don't get, we can't do the job with some check it out. You know, I mean, we got a, a business bank account. What a me? <laughs> a bank account, a driver's license, a vehicle, insured. Praise God. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Charles a good. He's a good trainer, man. He's, he's a well, a well. Okay, I've got to. I got to shut it down. But uh, you know, sometimes we get in here and we feel we feel stuck. You know, man, how am I ever going to do this? Man, how am I ever going to do that? You know, we're. And then let me just reiterate this. We want to get something going here. I'll talk to Pastor Walt about it later, about training and all that for the guys that want to do it. And then obviously that goes strictly through, get through Walt, whatever he says. Right? Yeah. But, you know, it, it's fun to have your own little Christian home. And be doing Bible studies and this and that. You know, doing what we used to do back in the mining house and the DD and all that, you know. And people are getting off the street. People are getting saved. People are getting visions. People are getting their lives back. It's the same thing, of course, if it's happening in Phoenix. Because it's basically the same formula. Just, you know. So anyway, I love you guys. We're going to take the land. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to do it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm a grandpa. This is so neat because I'm able, God puts my heart years ago and watch these guys grow. I travail in birth till precious for them. This is scriptural. And now they're out doing it. And I get to kick back and watch. Awesome. But the, you hear me all the time. That vision that's in me is so strong. Amen. And I'm an old man, but it's been imparted to other people. And this is a, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they're doing it the same thing. Second Timothy 2 2. The thing you've heard of me, commit the faithful men are able to do the same thing also. This is so neat. No, no, man, I'll tell you something. Hey, I wish before you leave, pray for him. Get him out there getting that buses full, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just look down the Just look down. And I know, without a question, what God's going to do, he's going to take church on the street. Now, here's what I've said all the time I say this. He's going to take a bunch of misfits like us and go show the world uh -huh. what he can do with people listening. Amen? Amen? Well, they did great. We got 10 minutes, we'll be back in here.